<laughs> Thrones is back. I mean, Thrones is all the way back. This is that great feeling, Sunday night feeling. There's no football on uh, to distract me from the beginning and end of the day. Uh, from 6 o'clock Western, 9 o'clock Eastern, Thrones comes back. And it just feels nice. It feels nice when the music plays. And now that we have the new intro with the threads it's weaving the story of, of the season as it has played out thus far. It just feels good. All the political intrigue is there. All of the, the family uh, squabbles, backstabbings, alliances. Everything is just, it just feels good to watch great show, great acting, great writing. Everything to this point, you never know how a show uh, can go off the rails at some time. Uh, at some point but so far i have been massively enjoying house of the dragon jason you're enjoying house of the dragon remy you're enjoying house of the dragon jason talk to me what has uh been the experience of going off the heels of game of thrones and it, we all kind of went into house of the dragon last season being like oh, i don't know but then one i think the one pretty much everybody over what is your feeling right now as we are in season two we're going to talk about something positive that all three of us like. <laughs> Table flip. Like, oh, my God, this is great. Uh, I'm always like uh, sabotaged by you guys. Like, oh, you thought we were going to like this? No, we're going to trash on it the whole time. So I was expecting the last minute to be like, fuck Game of Thrones forever. <laughs> so good. I'm glad. I think the audience needs to know that we know nothing about what we're going to say before this. We're all reacting to each other's opinions on the fly. <laughs> Yes, we were told last week we talked about the boys. Everyone told us what morons we are. So if you want to leave a comment and telling us what morons we are about this, by all means do so. I could read a, a gatney of comments from last week that were saying, you guys are the biggest morons ever. I'm just tuning in to tell you what a moron you are. So if you guys want to just hate watch this, by all means, enjoy enjoy the hate watch. Yeah, just hit that subscribe button before you leave. That's the um, algorithm, baby, right? Uh, yes, I think I was on board with this show from episode one, day one, all that good stuff. I had high hopes for this one. So it's, I'm glad it's all panning out. Um, <clears throat> what I'm taking from it recently though, is I'm really liking the slim similarities between the small councils and how the two Queens are having to deal with that. Like that's kind of very, uh, my, my focus, my intrigue right now is what these two women are going to do with these men that are surrounding them that do not trust their their judgment and things like that and how are they going to sneak back to each other and have all these plans and things like that and have their own little small council together i really like that <clears throat> that comparison of those two situations right now um but yeah yeah i i'm so happy about the dragon fights and how it's all panning out and how the public is seeing how these dragon fights are panning out you know and how even normal army dudes are seeing how these you know pan out and what it means to all of them and so it's very cool that we want to see these dragon fights those have been reaching the high high levels that dragons fight in so i've been really enjoying that the ladies sir, sir cole being a douchebag <laughs> yeah no this is like you said thrones is back where it needed to be it has been really nice to look forward to house of the dragon coming home or just like on a sunday night it's a nice nice way to cap off the week especially when you have some mid-ass lame-ass <laughs> show through the week to not look forward to which show is that right uh, oh i don't know i'm sure there's a show out there in that group <laughs> cover that is, is it reruns of uh, two and a half men that you're referring to or something oh god <laughs> just criminal minds this isn't what it used to be you know <laughs> they lost me right around season 17 18 it just wasn't the same so anyway uh yeah act, acting is great the acting's great the writing is good characters are constantly doing stupid things but it makes sense within the characters where it doesn't feel just like dumb. Like they usually do a pretty good job of explaining their motivations. So you're like understanding why they do what they do, even if it is dumb. Um, which like, yeah, between uh, Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra is just the worst leader ever. I'm pretty confident she's the worst leader ever in her own way. Like, and we'll get more to that. But uh, I just appreciate that. Yeah, the characters, characters make you feel and like care whether you want them to live or die or succeed or fail. Um, uh, obviously soundtrack by uh, Ramin is goaded as always. The The dragon battles are awesome. It's yeah. Season two is sick. It's, it's great. And it's a nice 10, 10 episodes that we get to look forward to. We got five nice. more weeks of this. 
nice. that's pretty nice. Nice. I didn't realize that. Nice. The yeah, you're right. This isn't just because every time a character, um, every time a character does the makes a plan, I'm always like, this is a really bad plan, and it, things go badly. But it makes sense for each character because Sir Chris and Cole, uh, completely inexperienced, has these great ideas on how he's going to win a, win a battle. He's completely just out of his element. Uh, Rhaenyra is is says in this episode, it says in episode five that you know she was taught all the names of of every family and all all of the uh, proceedings of the court and all this stuff. But she is inexperienced in warfare. She was never taught like the difference between a hilt and a, a saber. Um, it was all these really interesting things because we are in this time where nobody's been at battle or war. No one in, in the council. So everyone is discovering how to wage a war for the first time. And that's why it just seems like these plans go so awry. It's not just like, this is the smartest person in the world. And, oh, she made a really stupid plan. I don't know what other show would do something <laughs> like that. But it makes sense because everyone has just been living, you know, getting fat and living in peacetime. But the the everything, the characters are so interesting. Eamon is just, that dude, it might be the best casting for someone where you just look at him and you're like, I don't want to fuck with that guy. Like, he just looks so evil. Like, if you told me that that, that dude is Lucifer, I'd be like, I believe it. I 100% believe it. So that dude, it, it just nails the look, the, 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 uh, the tyranny that he is trying to bestow to get his way uh, as we go. But, yeah, I'm really enjoying all the different characters, even though poor Otto. I haven't seen Otto in two episodes. Um, Jason, where we are in the show right now, what I like is... It's a giant chess battle, Ch a chess, a chess game of dragons where everyone that uh, you have Rhaenyra's side that's trying to go to the different houses, get allies. And everyone's like, we need a dragon. You got to promise us a dragon because if you don't give us a dragon, we're going to get melted. We hate getting melted. And everyone is just like wants to know like who has the dragons. What's your dragon to do for us? How are you going to protect us? Because, you know, if you don't have a dragon, you're going to get scorched. That's what makes this so cool and different than Game of Thrones is that we're just, where are the chess piece of dragons and, and who's riding them and how many can we get uh, to wage a war and, and win, the, win the throne? It's, it's it, literally a nuclear arms race. Yeah, it's the yeah. nuclear, who has the nukes? Yeah. You have a nuke, can you get us a nuke? And Viserys said it the best. I think he said like, dragons should never wage war. We should we should never bring dragons to war because that'll be our, our end. But then at the same time, he's just handing out dragons to fucking everyone and all of his kids like after he dies. Oh yeah, yeah, they're not gonna use any of those dragons. And then now just giving away eggs to random people. And I mean, the new idea too, at the end of the episode, like, hey, wait, how thin does the bloodline have to be, you know, to uh, to have these dragons? So I really, really do like uh, that we're getting all this. But I mean, it's I guess we all know how all this ends. So you're just seeing this destruction play out like them actually, you know, digging their own graves with this sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, no, it, it's very cool. I love how swords are just as important as some characters and even dragons and castles and whatnot. And each sword has a name and history and stuff. And we're starting to get little bits of that in there. And I don't know if you guys caught this or if I'm look, looking into it too much. The dagger that uh, that Aegon or Aemond has. They, it flashed to his hilt when they're talking at one point and then at the very, with, with the, the queen and uh, Aemond. And there's some other scene, but it's just, I love starting to get little Easter eggs of that where we're, we're getting stuff danced or, or sprinkled in there from the, uh, the original show. <laughs> Is, is that the Easter Bunny? Nope. It's just it's just Jason with another Easter egg. Oh my god, he loves his Easter eggs. I do, I do. Hell yeah. <laughs> I thought for a second, I thought it was the the uh, the dagger that kills the Night King, because because Aegon has that dagger, and it's on his body. Like he has it like on his holster. I forget how he gets it, but he has it on his holster like throughout the show. And so I thought he might have taken it off of Aegon, and that was that. I love that council scene where Allison thinks she's just going to take the position. She's just like, well, obviously I did just fine. And all the guys are just like, no, 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 no. They're like, get us some more wine and crumpet <laughs> of the king uh, woman. Like, it is funny that they, they just straight up and it, it would have been like this in medieval times. They're just being like, whoa, whoa you're a woman. 
what are we doing here? Like, well, that, that I like the line. Handled. I like the line specifically. Like, how are we going to make you queen when the whole reason that we can't make Rhaenyra queen was because she's a woman? <laughs> Which, so yeah, again, good writing, good character explanation. Allison just having this, and then just the slow pan in on her. Well, she's just so yep, pissed. Just the murmur of voices, and she turns to Cole. Hey, you got my back? Oh no. <laughs> Clubfoot, you got like, my back too. Oh no, you don't got that. I mean, Cole. how bad is it to be the person that is fucking this guy that you're like, yo, he's gonna stand up for me, and this dude's jerking off to your feet, and immediately they're just like, nope, sorry, yeah. no, we jerk got what we morning. needed. We're not, we got posting that clarity. We know it's not you. <laughs> well, she even makes a comment later about how he dips out in the morning, yeah. like right away. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Play stupid <laughs> games, win stupid circle prizes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that scene. I thought that was a great scene. And that's exactly what I thought was going to happen going into this episode. I was like, I figured it was going to be slower and it was basically going to be people vying for power. Um, figured Eamon would come up with it. So as he did, and it makes sense that, uh, and I like, yeah, it's interesting because Chris and Cole is basically, he, he totally watched oh, yeah. him scorch Aegon on purpose. And then you, I was like, is he going to speak up? Like, is he going to, is he going to be like, what the fuck you burned Aegon? Like, is he really, I'm just kind of curious. Like how loyal is Kristen Cole to Aegon? And it seems like his takeaway from that was just like, oh my fucking God, these people can just melt us at any point. Yeah. No, I think it, that was more crushing than uh, his king dying was realizing how small he's about to be in this, this battle going forward. You know, um, you were talking about people that aren't battled hardened or ready, but the Blackfoots and the, uh, the Brackens or Blackwoods and the Brackens. Now they're battle hardened <laughs> bastards right there. And I didn't think I'd enjoy the storyline as much as I expected to when I'd like Damon's just getting frustrated with these people, you know, it's like, He's, damn river he's folk. sitting there and he's just like it's like just the quick cut and he's like I did not think they would be so eager to die it's like no no it's like you, the, you get the vibes of you know the Starks and they talk about the North you know like we're different than the rest of the world you know we're the old ways and you feel like that's about happening with these river folk and especially what's happening to Damon which I, I'm enjoying I mean we're I like the crumble of his psyche but it's like it's just almost like overwhelming sometimes and i don't even know what's going on half the times like is he having sex with his mom is that what was going on like the blonde woman there was and then is that it, the, but then she says she don't even know what your mom looks like and things like that and i'm like okay there i know we're seeing this slow descent of him and is it by the riverland people or is it his own shit going on in his head is there other forces doing this to him if there's there's just a lot of questions with that whole kind of subplot but i mean i, I like seeing Damon like kind of go this level where he's like I'm going to be king and the Rhaenyra can sit at my side if she wants me to <laughs> it, it, that is the one frustrating thing because I really like Matt Smith and I like the character of Damon it does feel repetitive at this point that he keeps having these episodes and yeah there's the witch lady the Irish witch lady that keeps just being like messing with him she shows up and then he starts seeing things or hearing things and it, it's, it's at this point it's kind of frustrating because you're seeing him at these moments like when the the local folk come in and he can't really converse with them or try to convince them uh, to join his side because he's battling these these mental images mm -hmm. and so it's it kind of frustrating because i'm just like well what's the point is the point is this a, a somehow a connection to the mad king where this guy that that has all the ambition to be king and he's trying to make this move to take over, but he's also being just, his mind is going and wh whether or not he's going to be able to reel himself back in, or if this is truly his undoing is just his own psyche. Oh, good point. They're setting up the mad King, like bloodline, you know, and Daenerys is great, 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 you know, uh, grandfather. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's probably what they're playing into. I, it is very interesting because yeah, I, I, so yeah, seemingly Irish lady is a witch. Uh, she's like, yeah, because everything is fine until, yeah, he's having weird dreams. And then he drinks. She gives him a drink. And then he immediately comes to the next day. But then it's, it's, it's that, that is the only annoying storyline for me right now is he's not confronting it. Like, he clearly is having these issues. She clearly is the start of it. And he's not, he's just still just like talking to her, like everything's fine. And he's just like, seemingly like maybe wants to fuck her. I can't tell. But 
but yeah, again, just not confronting it. So now we're like two episodes in and he's having, yeah, these like, these like LSD trip moments. And then, but he's just like going about his day, like everything's fine. Otherwise, that's kind of annoying. Hopefully that's resolved in the next episode. Cause it's like, how long are you going to fucking trip for before you're like, okay, yeah, something's gotta be done. Oh yeah. Or someone, he kills someone or something crazy happens, you know, or, but she just sent buddy in his direction. So it might even be something, a battle against him. Um, one of the guys from the small council, I can't remember his name. The guy that kept talking back to Rhaenyra, why she was trying to hold her council. Oh dude. Okay. The one character. Okay. I now officially hate this character more than Sir Kristen Cole for different reasons. I hate the white worm. Oh, Masira, Masira, fucking Ed, dude. Mm-hmm. Two things. One thing. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> and why are you the hand to the queen giving advice? Second thing, her accent is and the way she talks makes me want to blow my brains out. <laughs> like she can't. I don't know what the fuck her accent is. I doubt it's real. There's no way that's how she actually talks in real life. If I'm wrong, I'm going to cut this out. But <laughs> if I'm right, I'm going to cut it in because she talks like where it's like every like sixth word has like an accent on it. And then she just sits there and she makes the same face this whole time where she's just got her eyebrow raised and she's giving some advice. But there's an accent on every so word. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. But the people see an ill omen. <laughs> yes, as do I. They are afraid. Bread is scarce. The king has fallen. They whisper to each other that when Viserys lived, there was peace. Sense and emotional intelligence that really only comes from having a very difficult life. It's been so interesting and fun. The problem with with the White Worm Lady, it it does feel like someone that watched Game of Thrones and they're doing their best Game of Thrones thing. And she's this completely irrelevant character. And all of a sudden, you know, she had a romance with Damon. And then all of a sudden she shows up and now she's giving sage counsel to Rhaenyra. It it's yeah, it doesn't really interest me. And I really don't care what happens to her character. The one part that just I really just don't care about. Uh, I'm much more interested in what's happening with Rhaenyra and Allison and their kind of evolution from young girls in the first season to now they're kind of trying to figure out how they can establish their own presence than it than I do about the people the the, per, the person giving Rhaenyra advice. But you you need this character on each side. You need that well, whisper, you know, clubfoot and being foot you know is way more interesting because he's so creepy. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and she's the I think yeah the spider more tight figure that it was in the Game of Thrones. But honestly, no, I I kind of like how she is playing it, the one voice that Rhaenyra is like listening to now. Does she have her own goals? Probably, you know. But this is what Rhaenyra needs right now is someone, a woman, like talking to her about the stuff that she needs needs to hear. And I like how she's going the angle of the people because once they put that dragon head through the city, you're like, okay, I know this is going to pan into something, and she is now going to be tapping into that, like turning all the people against, you know, the King. I think it's a cool angle. I like the, uh, I I'll give, uh, Sir Kristen Cole. We, we shadow over the internet has shadowed over Kristen Cole. As far as the character goes, I thought this was definitely the most interesting Kristen Cole episode. The fact that we don't get any real dialogue or looks, even I thought we were going to get like him and, and Eamon looking at each other. And you would just know that, there's just a fear. He doesn't even look. He's just looking at the floor anytime he's in the same room with Eamon. They, we don't get any explanation as to what happened between him and Eamon and what was said and what wasn't said. But it just seems like Kristen Cole's like, yeah, this is the guy that'll kill me at his moment's notice. This is clearly the guy that I just, I am going to ride with him. And that's just my, oh, that's a business decision. Just like, you know, a guy's dr- driving into the lane with a knife and going to dunk all over everybody. And like, you're just a business decision, not getting in the lane, not going to try to block that. I'm just going to walk away. So I did find him to be the most interesting. Rem, are, it, did Kristen Cole, at least as a character, it feels like a little maturity now that he's seen battle and he's like, oh, I am not the genius I thought I was. Yeah, exactly. I think, yeah, he fi- he finally, yeah, he finally got a, 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 his, got a taste of like real war and he didn't, he, it wasn't just literally some, some jerk off, like in a, in a suit with a cape that's, fucked his way to the top uh and literally twice he slept with two different queen mothers uh 
or queen, queen mother to get up there. And so, yeah, now he, and so he finally gets a little bit of taste of battle and it humbles him and he realizes, oh shit, I'm just a fucking pawn. Like I, yeah, I appreciate that little step of his character and the, yeah, it's, you know, a little bit of humble pie wouldn't uh, hurt Kristen Cole every now and then. It's not saving me from Kristen Cole. I hate that guy. <laughs> no, hell no. Burning dragon fire. Hell. <laughs> The uh, I do like, as I, I mentioned earlier, you know, the the dragon battle, the dragon fight, uh, the the parading of the dragon at the beginning of episode five. And it's this dead carcass. And you have the the uh, rat catchers that are all hanging that have their bodies have decomposed. And I'm just like, dude, in medieval times. Because it feels like this does capture, yes, this is a fantasy world, but it does capture that medieval times, just blood and guts and dead car- carcasses. And it's just, they must at some point have been like, why are we dying at 20? Why? And there's guys grabbing dead, rotting carcasses that have been there for like a month and just being like, I can't figure out why I got pneumonia last week and killed over. Like, Oh, we got some rotting flesh in my mouth. Let me just get that out of there real quick. <laughs> uh, but Jason, that is the, the world building and the life at the at um king's landing where all the citizens are revolting it makes everything feel like the battle it's not it's not just rhaenyra and her team versus allison and her team and and there is the consequences of now you're trying to raise armies you're trying to raise dragons to kill people and now there is the revolt of people so that goodwill that you bought with otto's great plan that we're going to parade you know, the, uh, the the kid's body through the streets. That's a great plan until people are starving. They, they don't care about your kid dying at all. We did get to see a lot of this story now from the common people. And I think that's huge. You know, that was what it felt like the past couple episodes is like, yeah, we get to see like the phrase and, you know, and get into some of the these black, uh, black water and black uh, or brackens, you know, and I do like seeing some of these families. But yeah, seeing how all of this affects the this, this small person. And that's what I'm thinking is like, that's going to be like what uh, Rhaenyra kind of wins you know over king landing king's landing is going to be the people within it and stuff like that and so yeah no i i thought that was a red witch or something like that coming back into the city you know that's and, what it uh, felt like yeah and that she's somehow going to use that power which i don't know the blonde girl at the house that she was walking into like who that was because i thought she was the one from damon's dreams like that's who was seeing the past a uh, couple time acid trips or whatnot but um yeah no i love seeing this this the whole world through these the little people's eyes yeah the 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 uh if you ever play lords of the realm the people in your keep are about to revolt and next next winter you turn <laughs> the entire city's gonna vacate <laughs> that is a, a a 1990s strategy game for the pc for for all of you people out there there is a, a 90s strategy game called lords of the realm and you would have a castle and you would try to take over the kingdom against a bishop and knights and all these things and if you don't keep your 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 people fed with wheat and milk they will revolt and they will no longer be your subjects they will hate you and they will come for your head i think your people are starving my lord your dad still plays that game to this day i think last time i was over there yeah (laughs) as surely as the sun rises and sets my dad is conquering a united kingdom right now from a 1432 we need him on this we need to get his angle on uh, the old game of thrones yeah. <laughs> if we could get if we could get my dad would have to checked watch out something. pretty quickly with all of the risque content yeah yeah uh, After, i don't yeah. think my dad would make it past the foot job <laughs> the foot job. <laughs> and that's last page <laughs> 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 oh no no oh it's still your thunder map no it's all right uh any other uh final uh thoughts or tidbits of anything you want to touch on like, things you want to see or or things that you expect uh in the in the not too distant future we just got the big dragon fight from episode four that was like the the peak orgasmic moment of thrones that you wait for so i'm not sure how many more of those moments that's a lot of budget they they that they splooged there um so what is kind of expected as we go forward I am really excited about these new dragon riders that they're going to try to like, you know, put into the ranks because we're going to see some cool shit and they're all just going to get murdered like 
and like quickly because they are talking about Tully's and some names that we know that we, they don't have dragons to this day. And there's not much in their history that they ever said. We're like, oh, yeah, the, this great Tully wrote a dragon. So it's going to end very badly, I think, for a lot of these families who think that they're about to get a dragon. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see how that all plays out. I like, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot more to, to follow. I'm very interested in where how Aegon progresses or I have an idea of where uh, Aegon's going and I'm kind of curious to see uh, him go that way. Uh, but I do uh, expect that, yeah, he's going to, he's basically just lay, he's like fucking Darth Vader without the suit and he's just Anakin Skywalker burned to a crisp. And I'm assuming he's just going to be like a raging invalid, but I don't know. Hmm. So, At the end of the episode, Rhaenyra is talking to Jace and they, Jace is saying that we need to recruit, people with a little bit of blood and we're going to go through the the uh, archives and we're going to figure out how many people we can get to dry dragons and uh this feels like along the lines of bad plans this feels like because you have amon with uh vagar and vagar is just so giant it's that anytime he shows up he looks huge and then when he's compared to other dragons he's just so big and this feels like a 99 leveled character in a video game about to go against some spry five level like some Tully's gonna get on a dragon and be like oh my god i'm flying a dragon and then vegas just ah (laughs) (laughs) it's like it just feels like no matter what you guys do you're still unless you just get multiple dragons vegar is so dominating and so such a threat especially with amon riding him that it's going to take a lot of strategy and maneuvering to figure out who can take on Vagar and who is ultimate how are they going to strategize once they get other riders to be able to take down uh, Aemon and Vagar yeah no exciting shit that's